Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice Diophantine equation. In other words, an equation with integer solutions. So we have a plus ab plus b equals 52, and a and b are integers, and we're going to evaluate a plus b. I know there is a very cheap solution to this equation, which you can write as a plus b equals 52 minus ab, but that's not what I mean. I do want you to find a numerical answer. Okay, let me make that clear first. So now, to solve this problem, we're going to use a special method first, which is called SFFT, which is an abbreviation for Simon's favorite factoring trick. I just call it Simon for short. So we're going to use Simon first, and then I'll show you an alternative. So let's start with the first method. With uh, Simon, we want to write the product first. Let's go ahead and write it first, AB plus a plus b equals 52. First of all, notice that there is no common factors on the left-hand side, right? We can't just factor it. We have a product and a sum. So how do you do it? We, Even though we don't have a common factor, we can still factor the first two terms. a is a common factor. That gives us b plus 1. And then, obviously, this b plus 1 needs to be followed by another b plus 1, so we'll end up having a common factor. That's how Simon works, okay? So we're going to add 1 to both sides, and that's going to give us a 53. And since one, b plus 1 is multiplied by nothing, we can just put 1 there. Now, this is factorable as a plus 1 times b plus 1. And notice that 53 is a prime number, which means there's only so many ways you can factor it. So we're going to look at each case, and for each scenario, we're going to find the A and B values. And of course, there's a symmetry. If you want, you can just focus on A and then switch around the values. Same thing. So what are the factors? We can have A plus 1 equals 53 and B plus 1 equals 1. It didn't say positive integers. It just said integers, so 0 is okay. Even negatives are okay. From here we get a equals 52 and b equals 0. So let me go ahead and do the following. Let's go ahead and look at each case, and then we're going to list all the solutions together. So this is one pair. Another pair would be a plus 1 equals 1 and b plus 1 equals 53. And another one would be 53 with a negative sign and 1 with a negative sign. Negative 53 and negative 1, and then we're just going to switch. Okay, so these are all the cases since 53 is a prime number. Let's go ahead and write the solution as an ordered pair in each case. First one gives us 52, 0. I'm writing the A first, so these are A, B ordered pairs. The second one gives us 0, 52. As you can see, A and B are interchangeable. And then this one gives us negative 54, comma, negative 2. And finally, negative 2, comma, negative 54. So those are going to be all the solutions to this Diophantine equation. But guess what? Those are the solutions, but that's not the answer. We're supposed to find a plus b. So let's go ahead and add the values. a plus b can be 52, or a plus b can be negative 56. Notice that the value of a plus b is unchanged when you switch the a and b around because of symmetry. Make sense? Okay, I hope it does. Now let's go ahead and talk about the second method. Now any guesses about how the second method is going to go? Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to start with the product, but we're going to keep the AB. So let me re rewrite the original problem. A plus AB plus B equals 52. So this time we're going to keep these two terms on the left and subtract A from both sides. Now, what is the reasoning behind this? The idea is to factor out the b. Make sense? When you factor out a b, you get a plus 1. And we pretty much did the same thing with the first method, but it was slightly different. So I'll show you how uh, it's different. This is going to be 52 minus a again. And now I want to divide both sides by a plus 1, obviously, right? Now, at this point, it could be guess and check. You could just plug in values for a until 
you make it work. For example, if a is equal to 3, is 49 divisible by 4? The answer is no. If a is equal to 2, is 50 div divisible by 3? No, those values do not work. So we kind of have to, obviously, we're not going to keep trying, right? We have to do it in a smarter way. So here's how we can do it. And this is important because this also goes into partial fractions. So I want to split 52 minus a into pieces so that one of them is divisible by a plus 1. Okay, how can I do that? I can basically do the following. Pretend that we are subtracting a plus 1 from 52 instead of a, but that just brings in an extra negative 1, which I have to make up by adding 1. Make sense? So it's kind of like I subtracted 1 and then added 1, but then the subtraction with the my parentheses turned into a plus sign. All right, make sense? And now we're going to combine these two numbers. 52 plus 1 is 53. So that's going to give me B equals 53 minus the quantity A plus 1. It's important to keep that in parentheses all the time. And then we're going to go ahead and split this up. How do we split it up? Easy. 53 divided by A plus 1 minus A plus 1 divided by A plus 1. But that's equal to 1. So let's just go ahead and replace it with 1. And we're pretty much done. Well, not yet, but at least we brought this problem to a manageable, easily manageable form. Now, you have to think about the following. 53 divided by a plus 1 is an integer. Why? Because b is an integer, right? And since b is an integer, 53 over a plus 1 minus 1 needs to be an integer. So this needs to be an integer. What's that supposed to mean? It means that a plus 1 is a factor or divisor of 53. Of course, you have to consider all positives and negatives. So what are the options? How can a plus 1 be a factor of 53? Okay, let's check. a plus 1 can be 53, which means a is 52. Or a plus 1 can be negative 53, which means a is going to be negative 54. Or a plus 1 can be 1, which means a is 0. Or a plus 1 can be negative 1. All these numbers go into 53, right? And in this case, a will be negative 2. So we get four different values for a. And then, of course, to find the b values, you can just plug those in. Not these ones, but these ones. For example, if a plus 1 is 53, then from here b is equal to 53 divided by 53 minus 1, which is 0. And then if a is equal to negative 50, I mean not a, if a plus 1 is equal to negative 53, then we get negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. And then if a plus 1 is 1, then we get 53 minus 1, which is 52. And finally, we do get, if a plus 1 is equal to negative 1, this gives us negative 54 for b. But we're looking for a plus b values, so you can just add them. And guess what? You're going to end up with the same solutions. There's going to be two distinct values, 52 and negative 56, as before. Make sense? Okay, great. Let me just tell you something real quick, and then we'll finish up. Notice that here, if you add 1 to both sides, you're going to get b plus 1 equals 53 over a plus 1. And then by cross multiplication, you'll end up with the exact same equation that we work with. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.